university admissions counselor here in the Dallas area. Um, I work for a university called Green King University. We're a private Christian school in Phoenix, Arizona. And I graduate from University of North Texas. So go Eagles. And we're transitioning from high school to college. My computer just did something weird. Give me one second. My OK, there we go. OK, so today we're going to talk about transitioning from high school to college. We're going to talk about attending college, surviving college and then thriving while in college. So it'll be a little bit of a shift between getting to college and then what to do when you actually get there. So attending college, we're going to talk about preparing for college, paying for college, living on and off campus, scheduling classes effectively, saving your syllabus and major projects and assignments, and then move in must haves, what you can and cannot bring, and then some work study pros and cons of working. So preparing for college. So what's after acceptance? So you've now been accepted to college and then it's like, well, what's next? I have an entire summer of life to live before I actually get to college. So since college is an, is an investment of your time, and it's lots of money you don't want to waste either of those things by failing at college so you can be successful um, you can be a successful college student by preparing now and we're going to talk about a couple of great ways to do that so one you want to identify your goals and priorities you want to outline a few items that will help you stay on track so i always tell students to choose your values so we've all been raised so you're now transitioning to getting ready to transition to college. You've been raised by your parents. So choose what do you hold near and dear to you? What are your standards and your principles that you believe in and what's most worthwhile to you? What are your core beliefs? Then you want to analyze your values, interests and skills. Are there things that have influenced your thinking and behavior? What are you good at? What do you like? And what is the connection between these things? And then you want to set realistic goals. So to make your dream future your reality, set reasonable short and long term goals based on your values. So short term goal, I always tell students we have this idea that we want to graduate college, but let's just start short term. I want to finish my college, my first semester of college with a 3.5 GPA or I want to finish my first semester of college by passing all of my classes. It's going to be a little bit different. I'm going from high school to college, so just set some small realistic goals and don't make them too far fetched. Prepare academically, so you want to improve your writing skills, learn good study habits and then learn some time management skills. And we'll talk about those things too so that you can be prepared for that. OK, prepare financially. Start a savings, be prepared for other expenses, and then understanding your award letter, identifying your resources. So you want to discover what free resources are available to students, identify how you can use them, and know which of those resources you need immediately. So paying for college. So scholarships and state aid may help cover the cost of college or career school, but you may find yourself in need of some federal assistance. So you want to know different ways to pay. So you have your merits and private scholarships, you have your work study, you have your loans, you have your grants and state aid, and you also have your savings. So there's a misconception that FAFSA covers the cost of college. This is not always true. So FAFSA helps with financial need, but it does not necessarily pay for everything. So FAFSA is comprised of loans and grants, so you also want to try to get some scholarships that your school offers. You also want to apply for outside scholarships. And then if you're eligible for state and grant aid, you want to take those. And then you want to do the federal work study if you can, or just get an on-campus job. Living on and off campus. So living on campus has its benefits. 
I always tell students to at least try to live on campus um, your freshman year, but you want to choose the best option that's for you and your budget. So living on campus keeps you in the middle of a vibrant campus life and culture. There's easy access to classes. There's dining options. You have your libraries on campus and your labs. There are also tons of events going on on college campuses. So you want to kind of be in the mix of all of that as a freshman so that you can get connected and that you can actually have a college experience. And you may not necessarily need a car if you live on campus and it could save you money. There are some off campus benefits as well. So if you live off campus, you, it can offer more space, privacy and flexibility because you're not sharing a room with a roommate. If you're living at home, um, you're not sharing expenses with roommates. Um, off campus housing sometimes includes amenities like pools and fitness centers, study areas and access to public transportation. Or if you're living at home, you still have the same amenities at home. You also have home cooked meals if your parents cook. And then keep in mind that when you live off campus, you're likely preparing your own meals or your family's preparing meals for you. So that is time and money. And then you want to compare the costs. So consider the extra cost of living off campus. Most residence halls are fully furnished and they pay for your utilities and internet fees. Plus transportation costs will be a factor if you decide to live off campus. So shop lots of places. Um, and then even if you live at home, I know sometimes people think that living at home is a little bit cheaper, but it may not necessarily be the most effective way for you to be successful on college campus. So moving in, so your must haves and you what you can't have. You cannot bring, what you can bring are things like alarm clocks, bedding, lamps, dorm, kitchen essentials, coffee makers, toiletries, shower caddies, towels, storage essentials, cleaning essentials, you can bring your bike. But you can't bring things like space heaters, toasters, um, anything that require that has plugs that could potentially set something on fire. Um, you can't bring your own bed or mattress. Those things are provided for you. No alcohol or paraphernalia. Um, no firearms or weapons, nothing that's illegal. Um, no hookahs, no electronic devices that are like smoking. So no vapes, nothing like that. So having a job while you're in campus. So there are some pros to working and there's some cons to working. So when you work, you have some work experience that you're getting for your resume. You also are able to make some extra money that you can save or spend as needed. And then you learn how to manage your time effectively. So when you work, you have there's a difference between your work schedule and your school schedule. And then in between time, you probably need to study. So you learn how to just manage that time. Then you also have networking opportunities. So you meet coworkers, you have bosses that you could get advice from and learn from. And you have lots of people that you come in contact with on the job, depending on what you do. The cons of working is it takes time away from your potential studying. It limits the amount of time you get to hang out with friends, and then it sometimes can add a little bit of stress on. So I always tell students, just get a job that works for you because working in college is fun and it is important. OK, what we can do we have any questions so far? OK, so surviving college, time management, college resources, broke by broke, um, budgeting, money and money and budgeting and money management, advising and then roommates. And partying. So time management, there are a couple different aspects of school life. So you have school, you have your social life, you have work and then you have, of course, sleep because that's important. Um, so you want to identify some of your time wasters and set goals. So it's easy to get distracted in college. So you want to pay attention to what draws your focus away from your studies and assignments. Now, if you have completed your studies, have done your assignments, are prepared for all of your tests, then that's a little bit different. But if you know that you're easily distracted, then you want to definitely kind of put some parameters in place. Um, but you want to create a to do list. So identify what you need to do and then prioritize those tasks based on 
when your assignments are due and how much time you need to complete. And then this also allows you to set a plan for the day. So identify your most important priorities and then get those things done um, as needed. It just helps you to plan your day and your time. Then you want to tackle some small tasks first. It's easy to get overwhelmed by large projects and big exams. Those things kind of create some sense of anxiety. So what you can do is you can start setting some shorter and simpler things to do so that you won't procrastinate and you can actually get those things done. And you can actually start doing those things now while you're seniors or juniors. You can start making lists of things you have to do, assignments that you have in your classes now, and then tackling those assignments so that you can create a sense of time management and prioritization. Establish routines. So the best routine that you can establish is a set wake up time. So if you know that your classes start at eight in the morning, you can get up at like six so that you can kind of ease into your day as opposed to rushing into your day. So if you get up at six instead of let's say seven or 7.30, then you have a little bit more time to get ready. You have a little bit more time to look at your syllabus to see what's going on in class for the day. And you just have a little bit more time to focus your mind as opposed to maybe getting up at seven and having to rush, get dressed, shower, run to class instead of walking to class, not being able to eat breakfast, things like that. And then use your breaks wisely. If you have a break in between your day or a break over the summer, try to figure out some things that you can do in between those breaks or some things that you can learn. And then don't be afraid to ask for help. Everybody is willing to help you, so don't be afraid. So in school, you just want to make sure that you remember that you worked very hard to get to where you're going. So don't take that lightly. Don't blow that. Make sure that you're continuing to set your priorities and making sure that education is your first priority. Your social life, having a social life and making friends is a vital part of college. It's important that you take time for yourself. It's important that you have that social life but you also need to give yourself a rest. And then work, working is important. So make sure that if you're working, try to work an average of 20 hours or less. Don't overload yourself. And then sleep, just get enough rest so that you're not exhausted. Okay, education is the passport to the future for tomorrow, belongs to those who prepare for it today. So there are lots of college resources available for you. So you want to take advantage of them and you want to kind of look at those things now. So if you know what school you're going to, start digging deep on that on the school's website or talking to the admissions counselors or staff at the school to find out what resources are available for students. And make a list of your strengths and weaknesses and how those resources can be useful for you. So like if you're really good, let's just say one of your strengths is running and you're really good at running and running helps you burn off steam and helps you release stress, then you want to know, are there resources available for me to um, exercise on campus? Is there a campus gym? So if there's a campus gym, then I can exercise and work out on campus and that's one way that I'm going to be able to burn my stress. If a weakness for you, like me, is math, my one of my weaknesses is math, is there a tutoring center available on campus? What are the hours of the tutoring session? So that when you make your schedule, if you already know that math is a struggle for you, you can go in with an idea of when would I have time to go to tutoring. Um, labs is also important as well. Tutoring study groups are available for students. So you want to know, do they have study groups for, for um, each college? Do they have study groups for classes? How are the professors? You want to have an idea of what is available for you on your campus. Okay, advising and registration. A couple of things with this, you want to attend orientation. Every school has a freshman orientation. Even if it's a virtual freshman orientation, you want to attend the orientation. There's a lot of information 
that you have when, that you receive when you attend freshman orientation helps you get ready for your first day of class and your first year of classes. A lot of schools are putting a lot of emphasis on ensuring that freshmen understand what benefits are on campus for them so that you can be successful. So you want to make sure that you are taking advantage of that orientation. Um, you can also visit financial aid office, the housing office, the registrar's office, and the advising office to see who you'll be working with in those respective offices to make sure that you're successful. So academic advising, academic advisors are important. They're very familiar with the degree plans and they'll help you set up your schedule for when you're in college. So a lot of students take a 15 hour class load and then they'll also be able to give you a degree program insight and then they can give you some success tips for each specific school or university. Every school and university is different, so talking with those academic advisors is important. Don't assume that because you've talked to one university and they've told you something, it applies to all universities. The Office of Disabilities offers a variety of accommodations for students with disabilities or special requirements and helps to ensure students have all the resources for success. So a lot of times the Office of Disabilities is looked at as a negative. It's actually a positive. I tell students all the time if you let's say you break your arm in college and you can't write or you break your leg and you have to ride on a scooter around campus. That's important for the Office of Disabilities to know because what if you're late for class because you're not walking, you're scooting to get to classes and your professor is like, you're always late to my class. Having that disability accommodation protects you from getting in trouble because you're late to class. So you always want to, it's not necessarily always a um, bad thing if you need to use a disability office or a negative. Um, even if you have um, some issues with dyslexia. You want to make sure that you're talking to the Office of Disability so that they can help you get the resources that are available to you for success. Mental health. Mental health is very important. Starting college can be exciting, but it's also a scary time for students. So oftentimes when going through the, this transition, you're impacted by stress, anxiety, trauma, you're homesick, Talking with someone and getting mental health is very important and can help to kind of help you to walk out how to get over some of those stressors. When I was in college, I saw a mental health professional on campus bi-weekly every other week and I was super excited because there was a lot of things that I was trying to get used to that I needed to talk to my therapist about and she helped me to kind of prioritize and put things into perspective. So mental health is a good way to kind of alleviate some of the stressors that you may have. Broke, fight, broke. I always say this is a club because in college you have a lot of students that are just broke. You, you just don't have the money. And even if you do have the money, you don't spend it wisely. So then you don't have it. So budgeting and money management is important. Although budgeting may, still, may seem daunting, you can bolster your chances of success by tracking everything you buy in a journal. I always tell students having a budgeting spreadsheet or a mobile app, every dollar is a good app to have when you're budgeting. It just allows you to analyze your spending and see where your unnecessary purchases are. It can help you also forecast some future expenses that you may have and preparing to meet those. One of the big expenses during your freshman year of college is spring break. A lot of students go on trips during spring break. If you wanna have money for that, budgeting can help you to have money for that. So you wanna take advantage, of course, of all the resources that are available to you. <clears throat> on campus for that, there are lots of student discounts, free campus events. Um, you could buy used textbooks instead of new textbooks. You can open have some open source learning materials. So have learning materials that you can print off instead of having to purchase. Um, you can also do thrifting. You can buy things from thrift stores in college, but I would definitely create some sense of a budget. And if you start budgeting now, then when you get to college, it's become it's not anything new to you. It's a little bit more familiar um, and your parents will appreciate you. Roommate conflict and resolution. Conflict is inevitable, but combat is optional. 
So just because you don't have, um, you're not always in agreement with your roommate does not necessarily mean you have to combat them. Communicate, communicate, overly communicate. Right before school, schedule a get to know you discussion with your roommate so that you can begin to set some boundaries. Um, if possible, do it in person. So if you're going to a state school and your um, roommate is from um, Texas, let's say you're going to a school here in Texas, your roommate is also from Texas, schedule some time in the summer to meet them and to kind of hang out with them and get to know them. Even if you selected your own roommate, so even if you have a best friend and that best friend is going to the same school as you and you're like, I've known them for 10 years, you still want to get to know how they are as a roommate, how they live. Knowing someone well and living with them are two different things. So you just want to get to know how they live. It may not be the best thing to live with someone that you know. You just really want to make sure um, that you know who you're living with. I had a student call me yesterday because she's living with one of her friends and her friend is messy. And she's like, I just can't deal with the mess. I can't even get to my bed because there's mess. And now she wants to move out of the room. So you have to communicate, communicate, communicate. So thriving in college, student leadership, clubs and activities, studying abroad, and then graduating with honors. So you want to definitely get involved and see what's out there. So right now, as seniors, you're probably involved. You may not be involved. You may not know how to get involved now, but it's something that you're not necessarily against. So I would try to start getting involved if you're not. Start putting yourself out there a little bit, asking questions, figuring out what clubs you may want to be involved with and what interests you. So. Campuses are a big place. <laughs> Not every club and activity is visible to students. So just make sure you're aware of the clubs, activities, and resources available to you, um, including clubs outside of your major or outside of your residence hall. Um, definitely go to the student center to find out, go to the um, stu student life center to find out what's on campus. Meet, greet, and network. The friendships and connections that you make in school can last a lifetime and help you in your personal dealings and professional careers. I have lots of friends from college. They're like my sisters and brothers now. We get along great. Your life on social media can be a great way to support your life on campus and stay in touch with new friends and associates. Student success experts advise that if it's manageable, try to join at least one career-related organization and one non-career-related organization that aligns with your personal interests. So I'm not saying get involved in everything because you do have, you know, you will have studies to do, but I'm just saying get involved in something. If you're a major is business, let's say your major is accounting, maybe there's an accounting club on campus or future business leaders of America on campus, get involved in that. And then let's just say you love soccer, but you don't play in college. Maybe you want to play so get involved in intramural soccer. Do something that is going to help you professionally and socially. And then stretch yourself. Look at all of your options, even those that may be a bit of a stretch for you. Um, and remember, it's a part of any education to learn new things. So learning new things is good and important. Um, don't limit yourself. Student leadership. This helps to develop you. Again, see what's out there, stretch yourself, meet, greet, and network. A college education starts um, in the classroom. So you definitely want to make sure that as a student leader, your leadership starts in the classroom, that you are displaying some of those skills in the classroom that you can utilize later. Talk with your professors, see what how they feel about um, what may be good for you and your respective majors, and then just get out there and kind of just do it. Um, try to become a, a leader in one of the club organizations that you're on, whether it's a team captain or whether it's the treasurer or the secretary or the vice president. Just try to get involved as much as you can and try to be a part of things that will help to grow who you are. You can also study abroad. When studying abroad, you get other student perspectives and you kind of see what their experiences are. So you can ask students, you know, you go to the study abroad office and ask students 
what they've learned, what they liked about studying abroad, um, how did they decide on a particular program or what country they went to. Consult with your academic advisor. Again, the academic advisor is very important. And then investigate funding because study abroad programs can be expensive and they're not always covered um, with financial aid. So beyond the cost of tuition, housing and travel, you'll also be paying for meals, entertainment, shopping, and then maybe some extra trips when you're studying abroad. So you definitely want to make sure that you have funding for that. OK, university changes due to COVID. So as seniors, you're kind of probably wondering what's going to happen my freshman year of college and what is that going to look like? Every school is different. These are some things that have are currently happening now with our current students that are now freshmen that were seniors last year. Um, these are some of the differences and changes that they're experiencing that you may or may not experience. A year is a it's a short time, but it's also a long time away. So delayed start. Some of the schools have had delayed start and started after Labor Day. I know at GCU we started after Labor Day. Online and remote learning. So know what kind of online infrastructure your school has or the school that you're planning to attend has. There are a lot of schools that weren't necessarily prepared for online infrastructure. So just make sure that you know what resources are available to you if the school does have to go online or if the school has to remain online. Activities. There are less activities and large gatherings, more small group activities or reservations for amenities happening right now. Still fun on campus, but just a little bit more selective and a little bit um, more safe. Instit community engagement institutions are seeking the help of the community members and local authorities to help limit large off campus groups. So we're just asking, you know, people in our communities to make sure that um, if they see students, they're not in large groups of 10 or more. College cancellation. So there have been some sports cancellations due to COVID, but um, hopefully next year we won't have this this problem. But these are some things to consider. Um, stay apart or stay home. So this is something that we try to really enforce with students. So we've set social contracts out. So colleges are trying to implement social distancing. So we've asked students to sign social contracts that say that they're going to do their part and that they are going to social distance, wear a mask so that they can help to make the campus environment safe. And then it's also been added to our university policies. Large gatherings, face masks, social dis large gatherings are prohibited. Face masks are required, social distancing is required, and then testing is available if needed. You can be removed from campus if you don't comply. So just know that these are some things that could be in place when you attend school next year and some things that, you know, may not even be a factor for you next year. These are things as seniors that you should be asking or finding out about the institution that you're looking to attend. Quarantine studies. Will I be excused from classes or allowed to make up classwork if I somehow test positive for COVID. I don't think COVID is going to go away overnight, so it may very well be here next fall. So if something happens and you test positive, what are the policies for that? Quarantine costs. Are parents responsible for quarantine costs? So let's just say you do test positive for COVID. Do you have to pay for staying off campus or staying where is the quarantine site and do you have to pay for that? Campus outbreak. What happens if there is an outbreak on campus? Will all the students have to return home or are students just immunized? Just the students that are not immunized or is it just the students that test positive? What does that look like? And then the quarantine location. Do campuses have a secure location for students to quarantine? Like at GCU, we have a specific dorm and we have our campus hotel that we've closed down and we use those two locations for quarantine. And it's free for students. If students test positive, they can go, they're assigned a room and then they stay there in quarantine for 10 to 14 days. So these are things that you want to know and that you should be preparing for now so that um, like if you're going out of state for college and they don't have a place for you to quarantine, that may be something that you'd want to consider maybe not going to that school or not going that far um, to, you know, for college. All right.
Does anybody have any questions? If you have, if any, you have questions, any questions, you can type, type them over, over in the in chat, the chat box, box um, on, on the side. The side. Since I know you guys can't get on here. If you don't have any questions, a um, couple of things. The first thing is um, we're asking people to fill out the survey that Miss Gilbo posted in the chat. So if you see that survey over there, um, if you have some feedback about this presentation or other presentations, we would really appreciate that. Um, we also will have this recording of this session as well as any others that you missed or maybe that you saw only a part of the session. So make sure to view um, our presentations when we post them, hopefully um, after today, um, they'll be posted on the EMS ISD website. Um, and then just once again, thank you everybody for joining us and thank you to Dominique for all of the information because she had some really, really good information on there. Um, if you think of any questions and you want to stay for a minute, we can stay on for a couple of minutes just in case anybody thinks of any questions that they want to type. Um, but other than that, have a great rest of your Saturday and have a great rest of your weekend. And thank you again for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Have a good day, guys. Kelsey, was that one okay? Yeah, no, that was perfect. I was not expecting it to have that much more information from the last one, but that was that was really good. It went in depth. It was good. Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, I don't know how far, how, you know, much to go in depth for students, but I no, definitely no. think they should know it early. Yeah, no, for sure. And I, yeah, <laughs> I think it's good to hear that stuff from somebody else other than even their counselor sometime, like hearing it from us because like the whole, your page about the roommate stuff. Oh my gosh, couldn't be more true. I roomed with my best friend and it was not good so just little things like that are really good for them to hear from another adult that they that's not their mom or their dad or their counselor or their teacher you know yes yeah, that's true virginia said she's a long life member of broke friend <laughs> virginia that's funny well thank you guys so much do you guys have kelsey opportunities um for virtual um presentations at your school for um, colleges Yes, so we're actually, we just met about this this week, so there's uh, six or seven of us at our school, counselors at our school, and we were kind of talking about that this week because we can't have uh, people obviously coming in our school at this time. So we were going to start a thing on Tuesdays during our lunch periods where myself and another counselor are going to go down to our cafeteria and kind of call down kids who either showed interest in a certain college or um, they just stopped by to say hi to us at our little table that we're going to set up. So that is definitely something um, that we're going to be looking for colleges to um, either give virtual information about their school or if they if you have a link for like a like you were talking about like a virtual tour of your school or whatever we can post yeah. that stuff yeah. um so i can give you my i know you have contact people at this at the school district but i'll type in my email address over here so that way um you can shoot me an email with just that way i have your email so when we start organizing that stuff i can just directly message you okay um, but there's my email address and then just shoot me an email sometime this week or next uh, i'm sorry this weekend or next week and then once we start organizing that i'll reach out to you and see if you want to uh, be a part of that okay awesome and if you have any students that have not decided on a college or that's or you know that are open to going out of state or open-minded we do have um we are doing we are doing some fly in visits that are free oh. for students that get accepted to our school. Okay. So and they're just one day fly in visits where they fly in the morning and they fly back in the afternoon. So definitely, um, you know, give those students my contact information and I would Perfect. love to have you. Thank awesome. you so much. Yes, thank, thank you.
We You're appreciate welcome. it. Have a good day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.